How do you cost optimize your Kubernetes workload? So you probably know how to adjust the request and limits of your pod, but I guarantee you there are a lot of cost that adds up to your Kubernetes cost that you are not aware of. In this lecture, I'm going to go over the traditional request limit very quickly, but most of the time I'm going to cover what are some other ways you can optimize your cost as well as some costs that sneak up onto you. So this presentation I gave in KubeCon North America, and I'm gonna go over uh, the important parts of the presentation. And I gave this presentation with my coworker Pritam. I'm gonna give both of our LinkedIn links. Feel free to add both of us. Uh, as for myself, my name is Raj. I'm a senior solutions architect working at AWS. So we are going to cover the Amazon EKS cost component, including the costs that sneak onto you. And I'm also gonna go over cost optimization techniques, including some stuff that you do not know. All right, let's get started. Now let's break down the Amazon EKS costs. There are three main components, the cost of the control plane, and then the worker plane or the data plane costs, and then some of out of cluster costs. So let's dive deep. So the control plane cost is the cost of the control plane for the EKS cluster. That cost is fixed. You really cannot do anything, 10 cents per hour, uh, pretty, pretty cheap. A lot of cost comes from your pods or containers, and that, that cost is based on the amount of CPU and memory, and your uh, pods can run within a EC2 worker node or within AWS Fargate. You can also be charged based on persistent storage if your workload is using one. Now the shared cost is also a big cost component that you may not be thinking about, such as networking cost. If your pods are communicating from one availability zone to another availability zone, those data transfers will add up. And I'm gonna go deeper on this networking cost down the line. If your workload is generating a lot of logs and monitoring data, that will add up to the cost. Governance data, as well as elastic load balancing. Uh, so if your Kubernetes cluster is using ingress or service, they add up to the cost. And again, there are techniques how to optimize the load balancer cost. And of course, if your cluster is using a NAT gateway, remember NAT gateway gets charged based on the data that goes through NAT gateway. So that also adds up. So I'm gonna deep dive into some of this based on my experience of working with real world customers. Also, there could be some external costs. If you are saving your container image in Amazon ECR, uh, there could be some costs associated with it. If you are saving uh, some data in Amazon S3 or you are taking backups, they all add up. So let's take a look at the container landscape. So this stuff is kind of your big ticket item. Uh, obviously, you should go after these things first. Uh, so 49% of containers use less than 30% of requested CPU, and 45% of containers use less than 30% of requested memory. Uh, so starting with uh, containers, so your containers uh, runs within a pod, and the pods runs within a node, um, and then you might have uh, volumes associated with your containerized application. And when you define your container, you should always use requests and limits. So when your uh, pod gets scheduled, it will always allocate the amount that's specified in the request. So in this case, uh, if this container runs, it will allocate 512 megabyte of memory and 250 millicore or one fourth of a virtual CPU. Now, as we saw before, if I go back to the uh, previous slide, most of the time this request and limits, you are allocating more resource than you need. Uh, so what you should do instead is uh, performance optimize this and uh, set up horizontal pod autoscaler and cluster autoscaler so that your pods can scale effectively. You might ask, Raj, how I am going to find inefficient uh, pods? So for Amazon EKS, we have a plugin cube resource report, which is a very nice report. 
And you could see on the last column, it shows Slack cost. It also shows how much CPU and memory is actually being used. So for the first row, the Slack cost is $160. That means uh, if you optimize the CPU and memory, so basically uh, just change the CPU and memory in the request field. Uh, so if I go back previously, so here, uh, you could save up to $160 per month. Now moving forward, uh, EKS recently announced integration with KubeCost. I love KubeCost. Uh, so KubeCost shows the cost allocation based on namespace, pods, uh, etc. And here also it shows the cost efficiency. So you could see uh, the cost efficiency is 14.2%. Uh, so basically you are wasting a lot and KubeCost also shows how much CPU and memory you should allocate. So take a look at KubeCost. Again, uh, this is provided free of charge on Amazon EKS. So now let's go into auto scaling considerations. So these are the stuff that you probably don't pay attention to, but they can save you a lot of money. So let's go with a cluster auto scaler. This could happen that you are running four EC2 worker nodes and um, the second EC2 is running two pods, the third EC2 and fourth EC2 are running one pod each. So this is not optimized at all because uh, you are paying for the last three EC2s even though they are very poorly utilized. So in the cluster autoscaler, there are two parameters. One is scale down utilization threshold and the second one is scale down unneeded time. So scale down utilization threshold says that if the EC2 resource utilization is less than certain percent, it is going to evict the pods and put them into some other EC2. And then after some time, which is determined by scale down unneeded time, it's gonna shut down that EC2. So if you adjust this, what it is going to do is it's gonna move those pod to another EC2 and shut down those two EC2s. So it's better utilization of worker nodes leads to reduced cost. Now another technique is cluster autoscaler priority expander. Uh, so let's say you have purchased a reserved instance or spot instance and when your worker nodes are scaling, you want uh, the reserved instances or spot instances to scale fast. So you want to give them priority. So you could do that, you can define a config map and uh, let's say in this case under priorities I have put 10 for on-demand instances and 50 for reserved instances. So these are the name of the node group and it takes regex. So when the EC2 needs to scale up, it is going to scale up the reserved instances node group first. So I'm showing with reserved, you can do with like, let's say you have a graphical workload and you prefer to spin up a certain GPU types of instances first before other types. So you can control that using Priority Expander. Now let's take a look uh, with Carpenter. Carpenter is our new cluster autoscaler getting super popular. So same scenario with Carpenter, you have to turn on one option consolidation and what it will do is, it is gonna evict the pods and put them into existing EC2. Now Carpenter goes one step forward than Cluster Autoscaler. Uh, so in Cluster Autoscaler, it was just moving the pods into other EC2s. With Carpenter, it can also see that if it can spin up a cheaper EC2. So let's say in this case, the second and third EC2 is M5.extra large they're only running one pod each. So instead of just moving that pod into one of them five extra large because it will still be underutilized, Carpenter can create a smaller instance such as m5.large and consolidate the pods there. Uh, better selection of worker nodes leading to reduced cost. So now let's go into networking cost and this part sneaks on to you. So there are multiple factors on this. Uh, so I'll give you a few examples, the big ones. Uh, so ECR or Elastic Container Registry is where your container image is stored. It could be a different region. 
Now, when you grab the image from the same region, the data transfer is free, you don't get charged. But if you are grabbing the image from a different region, you will get charged. Second one is super common, inter AZ pod to pod communication. So if your workload is running in multiple availability zone and uh, the pod from one AZ is grab, uh, communicating with the pod in another AZ, you will get charged. Inter AZ pod to database communication. So your database running in one availability zone, pod in another. So when your pod is trying to get some information from the database, you will get charged. Egress from the application load balancer. So this one is a little tricky. So basically, uh, let's say your application load balancer, uh, you are using that as ingress and you are using node port and the node port can be in one availability zone. So from application load balancer to the node port, but the pod it is trying to reach may be running in another availability zone. So application load balancer to node port in one availability zone and then from that node port to the pod in another availability zone. So again, you will be incurring uh, data transfer cost. And uh, finally, the inter AZ worker node to Amazon EKS control plane ENI. So if you're running a private cluster, you will have a control plane ENI attached to one availability zone. And if other pods are trying to reach the API server, they're gonna go through this ENI and that will incur cost. So what are some of the tips and tricks? So with ECR, use the cross region replication. So instead of your workload going and grabbing the container image from a different region, just replicate the ECR into the other region and grab from the same region. Also limit the images to essentials. Don't make an image huge that with stuff that you don't need. Uh, because reduced image size also makes your uh, containers come up faster. Second, uh, consider whether you want or need private versus public cluster. So private cluster, all the communication happens to this control plane ENI. But with public cluster, uh, the communication between the pods and the uh, control plane, uh, such as API server, has to go through a NAT gateway. So again, that incurs some cost. So for ingress, highly recommended to use the IP mode instead of node port. So with IP mode from load balancer, it is going to go directly to the pod. It is not going to a node port in one availability zone and then from that node port to a pod, it is faster and cheaper. And in, if your workloads uh, need to talk to each other, so there could be multiple uh, workloads running and uh, maybe uh, some application needs to talk to another application a lot. You can use availability zone bound auto scaling group for applicable workload. So in this case, all the pods will run in the same availability zone and you will not incur the uh, network cost. So summarizing Amazon EKS cost, we looked at the control plane cost, which is fixed. We looked at the data plane cost, especially how to uh, performance optimize the CPU memory. We looked at some of the other techniques like uh, how to uh, change cluster auto scalar uh, parameters to tune as well as networking cost. Again, it's impossible to cover everything in one session, uh, but uh, take a look at all these different items and then uh, dive deep and then optimize your Kubernetes cluster cost.